this video, I'll be going through um, Krakow's theorem after all the uh, the other videos that I that I had put up uh, leading up to this video. Uh, so Krakow's theorem is important in the derivation of the Taylor McCall flow um, because it gives the irrotationality condition of the flow, uh, and we'll see what that means at the end of this video. Um, it's uh, Krakow's theorem. Uh, essentially is a combination of both the momentum and the energy equations um, for this type of flow based on the assumptions that we have. Uh, okay, so we're going to start with the uh, the momentum equation and if you can go, you can go back to my momentum equation um, video that I'll post in the description as well um, to see how I derived this equation. Uh, but reworking in terms of uh, in terms of in vector form, uh, it looks something like this. Uh, where we have the density times the total derivative of the velocity uh, with respect to time is equal to the negative of the gradient of the pressure plus viscous forces plus body forces. So in our assumptions from the assumption video, um, we can uh, assume that the viscous forces um, are zero, which means we have an inviscid flow, and then we also neglect body forces, so that's also zero. So we can also expand the total derivative this dv dt, and um, you can also look at the total derivative uh, video that I have, which I'll also post in the description. Um, and what you have then is the rho dv dt plus rho velocity times the del or dotted with the del operator times the velocity is equal to the negative of the pressure gradient. Okay, so then if we recall the TDS equation of which I have the video as well, um, we can plug in, which is essentially the energy equation. Um, or a reformulation of the energy equation, we can plug in this negative uh, grad P into the TDS equation. So this is the TDS equation, and then we plug this into here, so we're pretty much just putting this into this equation. Um, then you can see that the negative becomes a positive because of the negative here, and then, so we still have TDS is equal to DH plus 1 over rho, and this black portion corresponds to this up here, so we just plug it in. And then what we do is we can cross out the uh, densities, the densities cancel here, and what we're left with is the TDS is equal to dH uh, plus dV dt plus this V dot del V. And since we're doing the steady flow, we uh, are saying that the time derivatives uh, in the flow are zero, so this goes to zero. Okay, um, so from the definition of the total enthalpy, we can say the total enthalpy, or the gradient of the total enthalpy, so dH0 uh, is equivalent to the, the static enthalpy plus pretty much a, a kinetic enthalpy. Um, so this is kind of the enthalpy in a static flow when it's not moving, and then this is the, um, the enthalpy due to the movement of the flow. Uh, so we can replace the, uh, if we just move this term over to this side, so we have dH is equal to dH0 minus uh, dv squared over 2. Then we can plug that into here, into the TDS equation. So we still have the TDS is equal to, we just plug this in, dh naught minus dv squared over 2, and then we still have this term um, that was left over from the substantial derivative in red here. And then if you look at my vector identity proof video, um, which I'll also post in the description, um, we can sub this, we can sub uh, this expression here, which is V cross del cross V uh, in for this expression here, not the minus sign, just the dV squared over 2 plus V dot del V. Uh, and if, when we do that, we end up with uh, Krakow's theorem, um, and this is for steady flow, so, which is a, like I said before, a combination of the, uh, of the energy and momentum equations. So we, what this is saying is that uh, if you look at if you look at this this uh, del cross v, that's actually the that's actually the curl of the velocity or the uh, vorticity of the flow, which is equal to two times the angular momentum of the flow. So what this is saying is, if you have gradients of entropy or enthalpy, it'll create um, a rotational flow, which is inherently much more difficult to solve and to get analytical solutions for. So, luckily though, based on our assumptions and our flow. Uh, we end up having that the gradients of en entropy and the gradients of enthalpy, or total enthalpy, end up being zero. So the gradient of the entropy is equal to zero because the shock wave is straight. Um, so that at any, at any point in the shock wave where the flow is going through, the, enthal the entropy change 
uh, is going to be the same. So that the gradient of the entropy is zero. So this ds is equal to zero. So this goes to zero. And then if you look at the uh, my uh, enthalpy is constant video, uh, you'll see that the total enthalpy is constant, which means the gradient of the enthalpy is equal to zero. Um, and that's because we have steady flow, adiabatic flow, inviscid flow, um, and no body forces. Okay, so then this goes to zero, and we're left with um, this term here is equal to zero. So that's after the assumptions we get this here. And like I said, this term in the parentheses is the curl of velocity, also known as the vorticity. So what this means is since we're going to have a moving flow, the velocity is going to be non-zero of the flow, which means that this term in the parentheses has to be zero for this statement to be true. So we end up with this irrotationality condition, which is the, uh, the curl of the velocity is equal to zero. And that's stating that the flow is irrotational. Um, so we'll move on using this irrotationality condition, um, and we'll move on and get some more relations of the velocities, or for the velocities for the Taylor-McCall uh, flow problem. And I believe that was it for this uh, video. Thanks for watching.